Hi everyone, good afternoon, Saturday afternoon here in Dubai and a very warm welcome. I promised you earlier in the week um, I was going to do a live video and today it is all about trust and I, I really believe this probably affects all of us. All of us in life have had trust broken, we've been betrayed by somebody in our lives, whether it's our parents, when we were younger, that was maybe our first taste or a friend, boyfriend, partner, husband, lots and lots of trust issues I'm sure have come up for all of us in life. I know for me, I've left a trail of, um, di well, distrust if you like, behind me. Now today, th there are about 10 points that I do run through with trust, but I didn't wanna um, prolong the video today. So I've kept it to four main points. And my brain has actually gone to jelly brain today, so uh, I've actually written some points down so I keep on track. So apologise if I look at my papers, because I do have papers for this today. But there were really four key elements to really help you with that key element of trust, because betrayal is it's what's gone on before that trust was broken that's actually one of the most important things to look at. So it's like the run-up to... Um, perhaps the event that we need to <coughs> look at, you know, just to get some clarity on that. So this could be you right at this very moment. Perhaps your partner's had an affair, maybe your husband's lied to you, your mother's misled you, your child has gone against everything you've said, your friend has deserted you, you are feeling very alone, betrayed, and trust has been completely broken. This could be you right now. I know those feelings. That was me, I, you know, particularly a long time ago, very deeply, uh, the trust with my mother. That was, that was completely shattered with my sister, with friends. You know, a lot of people in my life have let me down. And I've learned a process to cope and deal with that because at the end of the day, there are no guarantees and you can never ever guarantee trust 100% with anyone again. We can only actually have 100% trust with ourselves. So there are no guarantees in life, but there are certainly things to put things in place so you can move on. And today, as I said, I just wanted to focus on the four things that I feel are the, are the key elements um, when rebuilding trust again. And the first one is to forgive yourself. And this one is key and really honestly gets overlooked. Because what happens is we tend to blame ourselves. So if something goes wrong, oh, fantastic, Nadine. I'm so glad you've joined me. And yes, I think it is. It will be key timing for so many people because it is such a massive, massive issue. And we don't we, we don't have any form of relationship if we don't have trust. So it's so wonderful you're here. So talking about forgiving ourselves, because if we don't forgive ourselves for what has happened, we blame. And then what, will, you know, what could happen is we blame ourselves. Let's say, for example, our partner has betrayed us and had an affair. So we then perhaps might blame ourselves because it's the way we look. And... If we're overweight, underweight, you know, too tall, too, too short, whatever it is, we might blame it on the way we look because the other person is thinner, prettier, younger, whatever it is. So that when what tends to happen is we think that that is the issue. So we think, ah, it's because the way we looked, that's definitely why he had the affair because it's gone on to a, you know, a much younger, prettier, smaller, thinner, whatever woman. So then what happens is we think that is going to fix it next time. So we get fixated on this issue of ourselves being the problem. And that has got absolutely probably nothing to do with it whatsoever. So forgiving ourselves is enormous. And that's when we have to, and it is, it is one of the first stages, is to forgive ourselves because we aren't to blame. We answer pain. We all have flaws. We all have things we don't like about ourselves. So even with all of our flaws, even with all of those bits and pieces we don't like about ourselves, we deserve to be treated well. So forgiveness for ourselves is number one key. And I do have a lot of um, separate things for dealing with the forgiveness for self. 
but that it, I really want you to work on that, ladies, focus on that, ladies, in the first instance. Otherwise, something's popping up there. Otherwise, we do tend to focus on what we believe is our inadequacy, our, you know, our failing, etc. So that is really, really key. Forgiveness for yourself. Big one here. Forgive the person who has hurt you. Forgive the person who has hurt you. Now, hi Emily, good to see you. Wonderful to see you. And Janet, lovely to see you, Janet. Thank you very much indeed on this really key, key, key topic here. So forgiveness for the person who's hurt you. Now, big thing here to get imprinted on your mind is forgiveness is not for them. Forgiveness is for you. And it takes a while. It's not going to happen overnight, 100% not. You cannot start to forgive somebody when you're suffering with deep hurt. And that's why we start with forgiveness for ourselves and looking into ourselves and getting ourselves feeling better. But the second stage is forgiveness for the other person because it is not about them. So to start the process, we need to focus on ourselves, build ourselves up, and then when we feel better about ourselves, we are able to stand in their shoes because we all see the world from a different perspective. Everybody sees through different glasses, from their experiences, from their beliefs, from their childhood patterns, etc. So we need to try and see how they see the world. So stand in their shoes. And when we can do that, we are then in a space to focus on their good qualities, not their failings, not what they've done. We can now realign and refocus. Because we feel better about ourselves, we're able to come from a better place. We're able to come from a place of love and not one of lack, not one of blame, not one of hurt. Because we are learning to create those feelings within ourselves. So those are the stages we really need to look at when we are forgiving somebody else. So that is really the second thing, ladies, to focus on there, is A, forgive yourself, and B, to forgive the other person. Because until you do those two things, you will never be able to move forwards. And it takes time. And trust me, don't do it alone. You know, find a trusted friend, family member, coach, counselor, psychotherapist, somebody you trust. It doesn't really matter who it is, but it's somebody you, you can trust and open up to. Third point, this is, uh, this, well, they're real big points, aren't they? Because that's why I've chosen the four. But the third one is trusting you. You really need to be able to trust yourself. Because before you can trust anyone else, thank you for the gorgeous hearts and likes. Love those. Thank you very much. Before you can trust anyone else, you have to be able to trust yourself. Many people focus on the fact that in a space of fear, they're terrified of something happening again. So let's, let's take, the, let's take it the, the situation where your partner's had, your husband's had an affair, your partner's had an affair. So you are then, you can get into a space of total fear that you will completely fall to pieces and everything, your whole life will fall apart if this happens again. Now, that is coming from a place where you don't trust yourself. So you don't trust yourself to be able to cope with this, to be able to deal with that challenge, because you don't know. And none of us knows the future. I've been married 28 years. I've been with Ian for... Been with Ian? That doesn't sound very good, does it? Mm. We've been together for 32 years. I still can't... I still... There's no guarantee, you know, what's going to happen in the next five, ten years. You know, I've got a good idea, and I, I hope everything's hunky-dory. But there's no guarantees in life. So when we come from a place of not trusting ourselves, we focus in on that lack, that we are just going to fall apart and everything will end if he has another affair. So we need to be able to trust ourselves that we're good enough, we're capable, we, are, we have you know, huge self-worth, we are wonderful people, regardless of what happens in the future. So that is a really key point, to be able to trust yourself no matter what happens in life, no matter what is thrown from you. And it will, that, that fear of your partner, your husband, your child, your mother, that fear of distrust, 
that great fear will start to disintegrate because you know that you'll be able to deal with it. Your world is not going to fall apart. And we need to understand that in any relationship, it takes a lot more strength to stay in a relationship where trust has been broken than to walk away. So if this is a decision of yours right now, that you are deciding to stay and make this work, talk this through, marriage, relationship won't be the same again. It'll be a new one. It'll be a different one. It'll be a better one. It takes strength and it takes time. And that's okay. But just to understand that it is actually the harder, much harder step um, to stay, which could be much more worthwhile for you. And fourthly, trusting that person, building up that trust that you can trust that person again. So you're not constantly looking at the phone. You're not constantly checking up on them. You trust them explicitly. And as I say again, there are no guarantees, absolutely no guarantees in that in life. But there are things that you can look at. You can look at other areas of that person's life. Are they trustworthy in other areas of their life? You know, are they truly, genuinely apologetic? Do you really trust their apologies? You know, are, are, as I said, other, look at other areas in the workplace with their friends, etc. What, what does that look like? What were the circumstances that surrounded this betrayal? You know, were they unusual? Uh, weren't you in a good space? Weren't they in a good space? Was there some trigger? Um, all these things really need looking at so we can have the confidence to be able to trust that person again and things can be put in place that that circumstance perhaps isn't going to be repeated in the same light because you need that confidence now for both of you. And now we need to look at the good in the relationship and you need to ask yourself this question is the good in your relationship enough for you to trust and take that relationship forward are there enough good points there or are there not that is a question you need to ask yourself is there enough good in that relationship and can you accept the flaws in your partner in your parent in your child in a friend, whoever has betrayed you, can you accept that this has happened? Can you accept their flaws? So those are two really key questions to ask yourself if you really are going to gain that trust. But remember, forgiveness comes first before you actually get that trust again. And as I say, there are no guarantees. And that boils down again to ourselves. When we trust ourselves, we don't need a guarantee in that person because we know we're going to be okay. So once you let go of that fear and that anger towards that person, you can then move forwards. And honestly, ladies, healthy, happy relationships are absolutely the key in life and we don't thrive without them. I learn this more and more and more every day of my life with, with what I see, with what I hear, with what I feel. It is fundamental and we all deserve, we all deserve to be emotionally loved and it comes with trust. So I really hope that has helped you today to perhaps focus on one of those four key elements, forgiving yourself, forgiving the other person, trusting you and trusting that other person and I'm more than happy to dive in deeper to any any one of these any element of trust um, I mean it's enormous I'm thinking of doing a webinar because I could talk for about five days on trust um, but I've you know I don't want to bore you guys stiff so uh, I think that's uh, that's a taster of where we are but please you know keep the comments going because this is big and I want everybody to be in that space to move forward because, because I wasn't for a long time. I definitely didn't trust me because I made every decision wrong in the book, every mistake going I made and repeated. And you know, I don't want this for anyone else. Life's too short. Let, let's, let's do something about it today. Hey, let's, let's not think about it tomorrow. Let's grab it today. So think about those things. 
pop the comments in the box below if you don't feel able to put this on the facebook page let's do an anonymous post but let's help everybody move forwards so thank you very much today for listening it's so lovely to have you here and i can see janet and suzanne and sherry and sam's joined us as well and emily thank you very much really appreciate you here i've got my radio show tonight if you're around that's 8 p.m dubai time five o'clock uk and 9 a.m pst time over there in the states with a wonderful lady sue winsbury so please join me if you can if not it is recorded and we're talking uh, about really big topic of course relationships but a lot on the toxic relationships and how self-love is not selfish so very interesting and a gorgeous lady thank you very much emily really appreciate that okay guys i'm going to love you and leave you and i'll be back with you next week but please keep the comments coming in it really helps me to to help and share with you thanks very much bye bye for now